Welcome to LMU Community TV News. I'm Adam Haley. Thanks for joining us. Now let's take a look at the stories we'll have for you today. This past Saturday, Lincoln Memorial University's top position as president of the university officially changed over from Dr. B. James Dawson to Dr. E. Clayton Hess. Hess is now serving as the 21st president of Lincoln Memorial University after the Board of Trustees unanimously voted to appoint Hess president back in November. Hess has been a member of LMU's academic community for four decades. He started his career at LMU in 1981 as the assistant director of admissions shortly after graduation. His most recent position was the university's provost and vice president for academic affairs. He has also been on the president's cabinet twice in his career. Dr. Hess's presidential inauguration will take place on October 13th at 3 p.m. inside the Tex Turner Arena during the university's homecoming festivities. One of the two escaped inmates from the Bell County Detention Center has been captured. 23-year-old Jeffrey Clark turned himself in Tuesday evening after being on the run for nearly three days. The vehicle he and 26-year-old Tommy Smith were reported to be in, a 2002 GMC Envoy, was recovered Tuesday afternoon in Four Mile and Clark later turned himself in. Clark told Bell County Jailer Gary Ferguson in his interview that he was near the Envoy in the woods while it was being towed away from the area. Clark admitted to being hungry and tired of being on the run as the reasons for turning himself in. Clark also told Ferguson he was sorry for what he had did in his interview. Police are still on the lookout for Tommy Smith, who is described as a white male, 5 foot 11 inches tall, weighing 190 pounds. If you know where Smith's whereabouts or have any information, you need to contact your local 911. Now let's take a look at your community calendar of events coming up over the next couple of weeks. The Harrogate Panthers Little League football signups has only two more dates remaining. Harrogate Little League has four age groups, five and six year olds, seven and eight, nine and ten, and the eleven and twelve year olds. The next signup date is Thursday, July 6th from 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. at the Little League field next to HY Levesey. The last day will be on Thursday, July 13th at the same times. Victory Assembly of God will host a barbecue lunch that will benefit their VBS on July 7th from 10 a.m. through 2 p.m. The cost for lunch is $6 and will consist of a barbecue pork sandwich, coleslaw, baked beans, and a brownie. There will be delivery available in the Tazewell New Tazewell area, or you may also dine in at 1590 Highway 33 South in New Tazewell. To place an order, you can call 606-670-8213. There will be an old Bell County High School picnic at Veterans Memorial Park on July 8th at 10 a.m. The Veterans Memorial Park is located on Highway 119 in Pineville, and they're asking if you, for you to bring a covered dish if you wish to attend. Middlesbrough Youth Football will hold signups on July 8th, 15th, and 22nd at Hibbett Sports in the Middlesbrough Mall. Registration fee is $60, and the parents or guardians must bring the child's birth certificate. Union Chapel Baptist Church will hold their VBS July 10th through the 14th beginning at 7 p.m. They'll have classes for all ages and they're located at 922 Dogwood Road in Taswell. LMU Arts in the Gap presents Riding to Hill with Abigail DeWitt on July 11th through the 15th. For more info, you can contact the director, that's Joe Gill, at 423-869-6265 or you can email him at joseph.gill.com at lmunet.edu. You can register by visiting the website on your screen. Swimming lessons are being held at the New Tazewell City Pool. Lessons for different age groups are being held at different times throughout the summer. Ages 3 through 5 will be July 10th through the 13th at 10 a.m. Ages 6 through 8 will be held July 17th through the 20th at 10 a.m. And ages 9 and up will be held on July 24th through the 27th at 10 a.m. For scheduling or more information, you can contact Mindy Williams at 423-441-2354. The Bell County UK Cooperative Extension Services will host a Superstar Chef cooking camp on July 11th through the 13th at 10 a.m. for ages 8 through 19. The camp will be held at the Pineville Bell County Library. For more information or to sign up, you can call 606-337-2376. Abraham Lincoln Library and Museum will present Tad's Tots on Tuesday, July 11th from 10 to 11 a.m. for children under the age of 5 and their parents or guardians. 
There will be story time and show and tell with museum treasures and history themed craft. Tad's Tots is a free monthly program, and for more information, you can visit museum.lmunet.edu. The Barrel, Laurel, and Whitley County Cooperative Extension Service Offices are hosting a free All About Fishing course on July 13th at 6 p.m. at the Bell County Bus Garage. The class will teach the basics such as catching, cleaning, and cooking. The class is taught by Kentucky Department of Fish and Wildlife. Anyone under the age of 16 must have a parent or guardian present. For more information or to register, call the Bell County Cooperative Extension Service at 606-337-2376. And finally, LMU will be hosting training from Vanderbilt University for families of students with disabilities to learn and engage in non-adversarial advocacy skills to support their loved ones. In-person training will be held at Vanderbilt University, and there will be a webcast for other sites, including LMU's Harrogate Campus. It will be held for 12 weeks on Mondays from 6 until 9. There will be a $50 registration fee. The deadline to register is July 15th. For more info or to register, visit the website on your screen, or you can also contact Joseph Cosgriff at josephcosgriff at lmunet.edu or call 423-869-6429. And that is a look at your LMU Community TV calendar. But stay with us. It's coming up after the break. Brandon Burke will let you know about LMU summer camps and more in sports here on LMU Community TV News. So, so we, we were, were walking, walking to school. I started thinking about lunch. Mom pat me turkey and cheese. She's smart. I really want cheese pizza. Sometimes her mind wanders. We should have a sleepover. I remember saying, Laura? I think I heard Laura. mom say something. The sign says don't walk. Sometimes it's so overwhelming. I really hope she doesn't have really another bad day. I really hope we don't have another bad day at school today. When you can see learning and attention issues from their side, you can be on their side. Go to understood.org, a free online resource with support and tools to help your child thrive. Here we go. Here we go. We're gonna go out there in the rain. You're gonna get wet. All right, here we go. Oh, no. oh, no. Okay, oh, yeah, yes. So much fun. I like to eat, eat, eat apples and bananas. I want to eat, eat, eat apples and bananas. I need to eat, eat, eat apples and bananas. Why can't I eat? Apples and bananas. One in five children struggles with hunger in America. Support the Feeding America nationwide network of food banks to help provide meals to those in need. Join us at feedingamerica.org. Welcome back. After a month and a half of summer activities and camps on the campus of Lincoln Memorial University, the 2017 summer event calendar has slowed down somewhat as we enter the early stages of the month of July. Towards the end of June, the Lincoln Memorial men's and women's basketball clubs finished up their summer events with the men's team hosting the Fundamental Skills Camp and the Lady Rail Splitters holding the Individual Camp. And at the conclusion of last week and coming up towards the end of this week is the second session of the summer for the LMU golf program, the Coaches Clinic, taking place this Friday, July the 7th. Following the opening session back on June the 30th, the second session to be held this Friday will discuss topics such as practice plans, coaching strategies and philosophies, golf-specific workouts, college golf 101, and ideas for starting and growing the sport of golf at the middle school and high school levels. If you miss out on the second session of coaches clinics on the campus of LMU, there will be three more sessions to come in the upcoming weeks, with all sessions open to middle school and high school coaches. 
For more information on any of the few remaining camps and activities to be held throughout the rest of the summer of 2017, you can visit www.lmurailsplitters.com where you can find registration information and complete brochures for all upcoming summer events. Just find the Athletic Department tab and click on Camps. The Tennessee Smokies, the holders of a season-best seven-game winning streak approaching the Independence Day holiday, have now gone into a bit of a losing slide in the early stages of a five-game road series against the Chattanooga Lookouts. The Smokies seem to be playing their best baseball of the 2017 season following the All-Star break after a minor setback in Mobile against the Bay Bears ended in a three-games-to-two defeat on the road. After falling into a season-low six-game losing streak entering and moving past the All-Star break, Tennessee leaped out of that losing hole in a big way last week, besting their divisional foe of the Jackson Generals five consecutive times at home in Kodak to boast a seven-game winning streak dating back to the final two contest in Mobile. After a home series against the Generals that saw some close finishes and some blowouts all in favor of the Smokies, a special Game 6 would take place from Tennessee, with the hometown club looking to shut out their opposition for a sixth consecutive time. Unfortunately for the Smokies, the Generals were finally able to pick up a road W in Kodak, besting Tennessee by the score of 4-1. It was a slow day offensively for the Smokies with their lone run of the outing coming in the bottom of the sixth period after already falling behind into a 2 to nothing deficit. And then two final scores in the top of the seventh inning would provide Jackson with the edge they needed to escape Tennessee with their only victory of the series. However, the Smokies would have the last laugh at the end of the day, coming out on top in the first five meetings of the six-game set. After seeing their seven-game winning streak come to an end at home, Tennessee would have to turn immediately right around the following day and hit the road for another five-game series, this time against the team they trail in the Southern League North, the Chattanooga Lookouts. The Smokies had some unfinished business with Chattanooga as the Lookouts grabbed the top spot in the division from the Smokies just days before the 2017 All-Star break and sent Tennessee into the break reeling, having gotten the better of the Smokies four times in five games in Kodak, the last of which being a 10-2 drubbing at the hands of the Lookouts. With redemption on their minds, Tennessee and Chattanooga would do battle on the 4th of July for Game 1 of the series, and there were plenty of fireworks to come throughout the contest, a war that turned out to be the longest evening of baseball of the season thus far for the Smokies. A back and forth duel between number one and number two in the division extended all the way to 14 innings with the hometown lookouts emerging victorious after four total hours of play, six to five. Tennessee started the contest off determined to avenge their marginal defeat almost a month ago by getting the scoring started in the top of the first inning to grab a one to nothing lead. The Lookouts responded with five consecutive runs through the next four innings of play, taking a 5-1 to one lead and seemingly were on their way to a convincing W. However, the visitors from Kodak brought home two runs in the top of the sixth inning and two more in the eighth period to suddenly tie the game up at five apiece with extra innings approaching. After the next five periods would see no scoring from either club, the Lookouts came up to bat in the bottom of the 14th inning with two outs already earned by the Smokies' defense and no runners on base. One single and two walks later, and the bases were suddenly loaded. Chattanooga then singled once more to win the ballgame 6-5 and put an end to an eventful Independence Day edition of Southern League North Baseball. With back-to-back -back losses on their hands, Tennessee now stands four games behind the Lookouts for first place in the division with a 7-5 overall record in Part 2 of the 2017 campaign. After a wild opening contest between the two best teams in the Southern League North, the action is just getting started with four games still to come in Chattanooga. Games 2 through 5 in the series from Wednesday through Saturday will all have the scheduled first pitch at 7.15 p.m. For more information on Tennessee's 4th of July barn burner with the Lookouts and to see how the Smokies progress through the rest of the series in Chattanooga, you can head over to www.smokiesbaseball.com. And that is all for sports so far this week, but stay tuned as more LMU Community TV news is coming up right after this. What do we know about learning? It takes place beyond the pages of a book. We learn by exploring, by trying new things, by connecting, by sharing. We learn by taking chances and dreaming big. At Lincoln Memorial University, learning is beyond the books. 
It's everywhere. Guess what? I have some news for you. There's free food right there, junk food. You see that truck? Oh, jeez. It's a two Michelin star chef. All for free, ladies and gentlemen, all for free. Here we have a panzanella with summer vegetables and pesto. Enjoy. Okay. How we doing? Fantastic. So what do you got going on underneath that plate there? This food is really about to be thrown away. Yeah. Bro? Is there, is there something wrong with this food? Where did you get it from? From farmer's markets. They put aside the ugly vegetables and the ugly fruits. Yeah. Carrot top, soft avocados. It was all food that was going to be discarded. Even the drink you had is made from like a little bruised peach. Did it taste a little it's like bruised? Great. It was good. The average person throws away 24 pounds of food a month. That's a lot. Isn't that a lot? Go visit savethefood.com for more information. Thank you. Junk food time. I love taking care of my mom. It wasn't easy at first. She learned how to better communicate her needs. And you learned how to not ignore yours. I discovered how to make healthier meals. And I discovered how much I enjoyed them. Becoming a caregiver is a learning experience for everyone. Find articles, tips, and tools from experts and others who have been in your place. The Caregiving Resource Center at aarp.org slash caregiving. Thanks for watching LMU Community TV News. I'm Adam Haley. Hope you have a great evening.